Hello and welcome to the section of the Trig and Precalculus Tutor Volume 2. Uh, here we're going to continue working with these fundamental trig identities, the trig rainbow so to speak, and just solve additional problems. Now all of the problems we're going to do in this set of, uh, in this lesson here, uh, require only what's written on the board here. So we're not really introducing any new identities here, we're just working more problems to get comfortable with these identities. So for the first problem, what we have is cosecant of x over secant of x is equal to cotangent x. Now there's a couple things I want to say before we solve this problem. First of all, notice that it's cosecant x, secant x, cotangent x. There's x's everywhere. There's no thetas. That uh, upsets a lot of students at first because you're, you're conditioned by now to know that all of these trig functions, they operate on angles. And angles are almost always written with a theta when you're talking in trig. So people look at x and they're like, why is x in there? You know what? When you see uh, any variable, anything listed uh, in a trig function like that, you kind of just need to ignore it. It's using the variable. It's just a variable can be anything. I mean, we're using uh, thetas here. We're using x's here. I could use a, b, or c, or whatever I want to. It's just like algebra. I can use any variable I want. So whatever this variable is labeled, it is an angle, right? It has to be an angle. So whatever you're operating on, just kind of keep in the back of your mind that it doesn't really matter what letter it is or what Greek letter we use. It's an angle, and so those, those uh, trig functions are operating on an angle. So don't get too wrapped up in what we're using. Sometimes we'll use x's, sometimes we'll use theta's, sometimes we'll use alpha's and beta's and x's and y's. It doesn't matter. To you, it's just a dummy variable. You just kind of carry it through the problem. All right. Uh, and the second thing is that everything needed to solve this guy is presented in what we already have here. So what we're trying to do is beat the left-hand side of this uh, identity into a cotangent and prove that it's equal to a cotangent. Now, one more piece of advice I'll give you as we're starting early in the course. You're almost always, especially when we get into more advanced problems, you're almost always not going to be able to do this in your head. A lot of students will look at an identity and they'll freeze up because they'll say, well, I don't know how to make it equal to a cotangent. I don't see it. I mean, even if I do some stuff, I don't see how it can be equal to cotangent. You know, it's kind of like solving an algebra problem when you, when you used to do that and that was really new and different to you, right? I mean, you didn't really know how you, or how the answer would look. You didn't really know that it was going to be 2.5 for an answer. You had to move this over to one side, divide by here, whatever factor, whatever you had to do. And then finally you get to the answer, but you know that every step you did in those algebra problems were legal. So when you get to the answer, you know the answer is correct. Same thing with these trig things. You're not going to be able to see, I mean this one's kind of simple, so maybe some of you can, but, but you're not going to in general be able to see how to make it equal the right hand side. You just need to take legal, logical, bite-sized little steps that you know are, that are absolutely correct and then beat it slowly into shape. Eventually you're going to reach a step where you're going to say, oh. Well, that's equal to cotangent, and then you get the answer. But don't try to stare at the paper and figure it all out without writing anything down. So when you look at something like this, you may not know how to start because you may not know what you, first of all, you look at cosecant over here and say, well, cosecant's one over sine, and you look at secant, and you say, well, secant's involving a cosine. How's that equal to a cotangent? You may not see how that works out. So you just do what you know is true, and then you see if the rest of it's going to fall out. So cosecant, if you look at your trig rainbow, cosecant is 1 over sine, right? So on the top of this big fraction, I'm going to write 1 over sine of x, 